my kind of town. Premieres Sunday, August 14th, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. K2 News, Local Plus, the Northwest only all local news, weather, plus the top five. K2 News, Local Plus starts right now. A bicyclist is killed tonight in North Portland. Now police are hunting for the driver who fled the scene. Good evening. Glad you're with us, everybody. I'm Steve Dunn. And I'm Deborah Knapp. It has happened again. Another bicyclist is killed in Portland. It happened at the on-ramp at Delta Park just off of I-5. K2's Paul Bookta is live with our top story at 11 o'clock tonight. Paul? Deb, it's more than three hours after this accident happened, and as you can see, police are still on the scene. This part of the on-ramp is still closed down, and everywhere you look around here, you will see yellow crime tape. That's because the driver who hit this bicyclist didn't bother to stop. The bicycle shattered on impact. Portland police say the bicyclist just didn't have a chance, and the motorist just kept going. What would explain, cause somebody to just destroy a bicycle, destroy someone's life, and then just continue northbound, which is exactly what he did. Police say the car moved at a high rate of speed when it hit the bicyclist, launching him 50 feet. Witnesses describe a teal or turquoise-colored sports car with a spoiler in the rear. Bicyclist Eric Hansen comes across tonight's fatal accident scene, another reminder of the dangers of the road. Tough to see, you know, and, and uh, but as a, as a motorist, um, I don't know. I don't think there's any excuse, to be honest. I just, I just think you, um, you just, you have a responsibility. Again, here's what police are looking for. They're looking for a teal or turquoise colored sports car. It also has a rear spoiler, and they believe that there is significant or perhaps not significant front end damage or damage to the, the front part of the car there. As you can see, police are still on the scene here. They're taking measurements, seeing if there are any skid marks if possible, and trying to gather as much evidence as they can in this fatal hit and run. Live in North Portland, Paul Book to K2 News. Paul, thank you. And as we mentioned, this is the second accident in just two days involving a bicyclist. Tonight, a suspected drunk driver remains behind bars accused of hitting a bicyclist in southeast Portland. Anthony Blankenship made his first court appearance today. He's charged with drunk driving, reckless driving, and assault. Witnesses say the Beaverton man ran a red light yesterday at the intersection of southeast Powell and Milwaukee. The bicyclist, Roger Watt, is listed in critical condition tonight, and the driver's mother says her son is having a hard time dealing with what happened. He's very, very sad and very sorry. Can you tell us where he was headed that day? No, I don't know anything about it. Police say Blankenship was also driving with a suspended license. Tonight, his bail is set at more than one quarter million dollars. New at 11 o'clock, the Coast Guard is searching for a young woman last seen swimming in the Columbia River. A person saw somebody go into the water just after 8 o'clock tonight and never come out. Right now, the search is centered between Government Island and the airport. Also new at 11, crews quickly get a hand on a brush fire Bridal Vale Falls State Park. The state park is located near Corbett about 26 miles east of Portland off I-84. Right now, crews don't know what caused the fire, but they say it could have been started by a small campfire or a cigarette. Crews use more than just water to fight that blaze. The white stuff is a foam that absorbs the heat out of the moisture, out of the grass, and makes the, it's kind of like washing your hands with soapy water instead of just plain water. It sticks better and does a lot better job. No word on the total acreage involved, but we're told crews were focusing on a 200 by 200 acre area inside the park. Investigators are trying to determine the cause of a suspicious fire at a Vancouver school. An early morning fire destroyed a portable classroom at Pacific Middle School. Investigators strongly believe the fire was deliberately set. The fire did $75,000 in damage, and school officials say a new portable classroom may not be available until well into the school year. It was an attack so violent a man lost an eye. Today, a Vancouver teenager was arraigned on felony assault charges. 17-year-old John Rodman is accused of attacking Don Denniston with a broken broomstick. Denniston had confronted Rodman and four other teens about vandalizing a neighbor's property last week. Denniston's right eye will have to be surgically removed. Rodman is already on juvenile probation. Court papers say Rodman has had alcohol problems, has run away from home, and has been accused of possession of a controlled substance. Oregon, one step closer to becoming the first state to require a doctor's prescription for cold and allergy medicines. The House voted 57 to 2 on that bill. Meth cooks use some of the ingredients in cold medicine, like pseudoephedrine, to make meth. 
Uh, those opposed say the required prescription will make it hard on citizens who can't afford doctor's visits. The governor is expected to sign the bill later on this week. The 2005 legislature is coming to a close. More questions than just the budget are being raised. Namely, will Governor Kulingoski run for a second term? And more importantly, will he have the support? Ask the governor about running for re-election. I'll talk about that later, but uh, well, I've got... I, it's, it's after the session goes home. But people are talking about it now and asking if this may be a one-term governor, his choice or not. But I think it would be fair to say the last six months have been kind of tough on, on the governor. K2 political analyst Tim Hibbett says, especially when it comes to his support for the first tribal casino off-reservation land, those against it spent nearly a million dollars on advertising, targeting the governor directly. Governor Kulungoski thinks Oregon needs another casino. But he's even gaining criticism from his own side of the aisle. Fellow Democrats have been frustrated during budget negotiations and vocal about issues they differ upon. If you look at every one of those people who are commenting, it's because I told them no. I'm not surly. I just tell them no. They don't like the word no. And I don't know what part of it that they don't understand, the N or the O. As for his challengers, two Democrats have already voiced their interest in the primary, Lane County Commissioner Peter Sorensen and current state senator Vicki Walker. Is he vulnerable? Yes. Do I look at him and say, my gosh, this is a guy who's in really, really deep trouble right now? No, he's somewhere in between. Tim Hibbets adds it's too early in the game to come to any conclusion with how this election could turn out. Governor Kulongoski is taking a couple of weeks off with his wife next month and plans on announcing his plans once he returns. Time now for microcast weather where you live. It's nice today. K2 meteorologist Rod Hill is here with a look at tomorrow's forecast. I wouldn't mind a repeat, Rod, if you, know, you can work that in. It's kind of nice to see the clouds take mm -hmm. away the sun. It was very comfortable. I do want to show you the northwest radar tonight because those of you watching us out east, you've probably seen some darkening skies uh, during the evening hours. You can see some thunderstorms really more in Idaho at this hour and a little bit just over on the uh, east side of the Cascades, but most of the state is dry, and that'll be the case tomorrow as well, most of the state being dry. Okay, we talked about the fact that, oh my goodness, it was so much cooler today than it's been really in quite a while. 77 degrees, the high temperature in Portland, and you see everybody in the metro area stayed in the 70s. The reason these clouds represent a cool front that has clearly passed through us, you saw it start to clear out this evening, and this is pretty comfortable air back in here behind us. It's uh, definitely a marine flow. And that means we have cool, very pleasant air coming in tomorrow as well. A little bit warmer tomorrow, but basically because we'll see sunshine, not the cloud cover. Now with this marine flow coming on board, another morning where we will see the chance of getting some low cloudiness, mainly around the Columbia River. The best chance of that will be up around Longview and down in the St. Helens, Vancouver, 56 degrees in the morning. Now if you're wondering, okay, when is it going to get hot again? That's the main focus coming up in my forecast in just a bit. Stephen, Dad? Okay, Rod, we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. Quite a tense night in central Washington where fire crews are doing what they can to stop a wildfire from destroying homes near Lake Wenatchee. A fire has already scorched nearly a thousand acres along the southern side of Dirty Face Mountain. People in at least 75 homes have been told to get out of there. K2's George Howell is live in Chelan County with the very latest tonight. George, what can you tell us? Steve's Deb, it is hard for us to show you with our cameras in the dark, but there is still an orange glow on the side of this mountain where the fire continues to threaten nearby homes. To make sure those homeowners are not left in the dark, firefighters met with them tonight face to face to make sure they know exactly what's going on. Home video shows this fire has already come much too close to home for hundreds of people. Well, it looks like to me it's burned a good portion of the side of the mountain. Kim Bodner has been watching closely as helicopters drop water and planes drop fire retardant to stop the fire from spreading near her cabin. But everyone out here knows they're at the mercy of the humidity and the winds. The prevailing winds are always this way. But then early this morning, the winds were coming from the east. So any news about what's happening is good news for John and Christine Humphreys, among the dozens of people who've been told to either be on the lookout or to consider evacuating. Tonight, they got to hear directly from firefighters about the progress they're having. Hopefully through this, we can give them a better sense of what it is we're doing and, and how we're working to protect their homes. Firefighters admit the terrain is steep and the winds are making the fight difficult. But so far, the fire is 10% contained. 
No homes have been destroyed. And that's good news for Marty and Debbie Adams. Well, we spent half the day up on the on South Shore Drive watching the fire move towards the cabin, so we're pretty concerned. And it's moved downhill, and we watched at one point just trees just catching on fire and going down the hill. Firefighters plan to bring in more manpower and equipment as needed to do their best to keep the fire from spreading. And again, the last report that we were given, at least the people, I should say, in at least 75 homes have been told to evacuate, to leave their homes. For those who've decided to do that, the Red Cross has set up a shelter for them just down the road in Leavenworth at Icicle River Middle School until they're allowed to return to their neighborhoods. Reporting live at Lake Wenatchee, George Howell, K2 News. Well, some tense times for them. George, thank you very much. It is time now for the top five stories outside the Northwest. Our first story, NASA scientists have made a decision over what to do about a problem that might affect the space shuttle's heat tiles and the safety of the shuttle during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. An unscheduled and unrehearsed spacewalk to repair the trouble. It's a risky, never-before-tried repair. The potential problem involves a material called gap filler, which is used between heat-resistant tiles. The filler is sticking out in two areas on the shuttle's belly. The largest protrusion is only about an inch, but NASA fears it's enough to make the shuttle less aerodynamic during re-entry, causing dangerous overheating. The shuttle has landed safely with gap filler protrusions before, but because this is the first time NASA has analyzed them prior to any re-entry, it's unclear if discovery situation is worse than past missions. Next, President Bush made an end around Democrats and appointed John Bolton UN ambassador. The president waited until Congress went on vacation to act, taking advantage of a power granted by the Constitution. The fight over Bolton's confirmation has been highly controversial and heated, but he arrived at the U.N. today, wasting no time getting to work. His mission is now to help the U.N. reform itself to renew its founding promises for the 21st century. Bolton's blistering criticisms of the U.N. in the past and his tough, even abusive management style led Democrats and some Republicans to block his nomination. ABC News has exclusive new information in the investigation into what happened to Natalie Holloway. The search is focused on a very specific part of Aruba's landfill, including only garbage from two days after Natalie vanished. This man led authorities here after saying he saw three men bury a body in the trash. He says he's too scared to be identified, but recounts what he saw to ABC News through a friend. I see the half of the body, the hair, the smoke and the skin was like uh, purple. And search teams believe him. He has joined them to help direct crews where to look. Throughout the weekend, a pond was mostly drained, and investigators believe that pond is a dead end. Somewhat promising news regarding drunk driving tonight. Traffic deaths declined, and fewer people were killed in alcohol-related crashes on U.S. highways for a second straight year. Some 42,636 people died in the nation's highways in 2004, a reduction of 248, or 0.6 percent. The decline in traffic deaths came as the number of motorists increased. Police agencies credit beefed-up education and enforcement. And finally, starting today, about 19 million cable TV viewers can now see Al Gore's new TV network. It's called Current TV and targets younger viewers with a blend of news and culture. Gore and his fellow investors hope that viewers will produce most of the content now that quality video equipment is readily available. And network officials say there are no plans for the former vice president to appear on air. They cost more than $200 a pair, so who sent this Vancouver boy boxes full of size 18s? We have the answer in 60 seconds. If you love HBO, you need to get Comcast Digital Cable with HBO On Demand. With Comcast, you get a library with over 120 hours of HBO hit movies, specials, and original series you can start whenever you like. You can even watch award-winning original series like The Sopranos and the upcoming series Rome according to your schedule. It's like having a free HBO library right inside your TV. But HBO On Demand isn't available with satellite. So make the most of your HBO experience with Comcast Digital Cable. If you miss the big Chevy employee discount for everyone, you're in luck. We've extended the program through August 1st, giving you a second chance to take advantage of employee pricing on almost every 05 Chevy vehicle. You pay what we pay, not a cent more.
Now get an 05 Silverado half ton crew cab LS four wheel drive for a Chevy employee discount price of $26,209 after cash back. See your participating Northwest Chevy dealer today. For a good, good. A Portland Trailblazer with some image problems is doing a lot in the public relations department. Darius Miles has certainly had his critics, but tonight K2 Shelly Bailey Shaw introduces us to one teenager who is trying to step into his shoes. Shelly? Well, Steve, we've all heard the saying if the shoe fits. Well, in this case, the shoes are size 18, and they fit a Portland Trailblazer and one grateful fan. It's a collection of shoes. These are the Jordan number twos. That would make Imelda Marcos green with envy. These are my snakeskin shoes. That is, if she wore a size 18. I didn't know that they made boots this big. The more than 50 pairs of shoes arrived in two refrigerator-sized boxes. Shoes for every occasion, for the court, for the street, even the dance floor. To my eighth grade farewell dance. The recipient, 14-year-old John Johnson. The gift giver, Darius Miles. The Portland Trailblazer suspended for spewing racial slurs at former coach Mo Cheeks. Darius met John at a pregame autograph signing. Yeah, we were talking about uh, how it was hard to find shoes, and he said, hold on a second, I'm going to my locker room. And he came back with two pair of Iversons, brand new shoes, still in the box. But it didn't stop there. Weeks later, John got a delivery. And the UPS man was just struggling. And when he brought the second one, he said, ma'am, can I please ask what's in here that's making you act this way? Because I just said... Uh, you know, thanking God and, and crying. And she doesn't care that the shoes, thousands and thousands of dollars worth, have literally taken over their small Vancouver apartment. Mom says there's a message here. But when someone does good from their heart who doesn't even know him, that's more of a motivation for him because he was touched by their act of kindness. But will John be able to wear all those shoes before his feet grow even bigger? He is, after all, only 14 years old. I'm trying. He is trying. We tried to talk to Darius about his very generous gift, but he's off celebrating the forward got married this past weekend. And Deb, I know personally how you feel about shoes, I and know. I know you're a little bit envious. I am envious. However, I would not be able to fit into those those particular that's shoes. That's true. But, but that's a great story. Two refrigerator is. boxes full of shoes. Huge. And it a took up the entire control. apartment. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Let's talk about the weather. Rod Hill's back with us, and no matter what kind of shoes you're wearing, it's probably pretty comfortable yeah. tomorrow, eh, Rod? I'm thinking, man, where do you put all those shoes? I wouldn't want that room. many. In the closet. <laughs> oh, I don't have the room. How we look? Hey, we have, we have one more comfortable day tomorrow, and then just like that, we're going to get hot again. All of a sudden, we're racking up these 90-degree days. We've had eight so far. Typically, we would have 13, and if the forecast is correct, we're going to be up to about that average, I think, over the next uh, 10 days or so. Outside right now, we're starting starting to clear out nicely. The forecast check uh, for today, I did have to work last night. Usually we don't have a Monday forecast check. Mostly cloudy. Hey, this is what I call a double-double. We hit everything exactly. Said it would be 77, it was. Said it would be 62, and it was. Our July accuracy, 88%. You know, it's tougher to hit those numbers right on the money than you think, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, Steve's not impressed. No, 65 degrees impressed. outside. Right now we have uh, fairly clear conditions. Could be some low clouds come back and get us by tomorrow morning, but the best chance of that's going to be up around the Columbia River only, I think. Uh, 64 in Aurora, 63 in McMinnville, 61 up in Scappoose. Going to be a nice, comfortable night. Already is in terms of having the windows open and keeping the house nice and comfy. 71 in Pendleton, 52 degrees on the other uh, side of the state down in Newport at this hour. Satellite picture, the first band of clouds is that weak cool, uh, cool front that pushed through earlier today. The second uh, cloud uh, band back here is not going to be going anywhere near us. It'll be going up to around us. So uh, in the middle, very nice weather. Again, tomorrow, a day that we'll see temperatures just get up into the 80s, I think. Now, Wednesday is the day that we turn up the heat once again, and it could be day one of maybe three days in a row of being hot. We'll get back to an offshore flow. That's an east wind flow. Shuts down the Pacific, so the air is coming off of a warm uh, land mass, if you will. 92 in Clackamas that particular day, about the same in Milwaukee. Even hotter, I think, once we get into Thursday. And real quick, this is the first day of a brand new month. As you know, typically August is the second driest month of the year with 0.93 inches of rain total. July, of course, is the driest usually. And it's uh, usually the warmest month of the year, typically averaging some five 90-degree days. The outlook from the National Weather Service showing much of the West Coast, including just about all of Oregon, expected to be hotter than normal for this uh, August. And much of the West Coast backing off of eastern Oregon, but uh, here on the west side, expected to be drier than normal. So 
The tail here is expected to be hot and dry for the coming 30 days or so. 68 tomorrow in Long Beach, 68 in Tillamook. Already some cloudiness has rebanked up along the coastline, so you folks more than likely will start off with clouds, but, but then it should become very nice and sunny for you. Northwest winds up to 20 knots in the afternoon. No advisories posted. Hey, low 80s tomorrow. Most spots, maybe only 79 up in Long Beach. Very nice day in the valley. Plenty of sun, so the clouds are gone. 74 up in Government Camp. On the east side, sunshine. Some thunderstorms down around Burns and Baker City. Pendleton Dry, 93. 84 Hood River. Light winds in the gorge. Your wake-up numbers in the city, 51 to 57 degrees. Maybe some spots of a little clouds, but I bet you most of us wake up to sunshine. Clear skies in the afternoon, high of 83. That's a perfect day, which means we rate it a 10. And here comes the 10-day trend, which is dry and uh, getting hot rather quickly. 91 on Wednesday. We're being conservative right now. Actually, my, my truer thoughts are 91 Wednesday, 95 or 96 on Thursday, mid-90s on Friday. It does look like the weekend's going to be cooling back down uh, into the 80s and then plenty of sunshine uh, continuing. I was going to say, I can imagine it's hard to, to hit those numbers correctly, but try yes. not to hit them that correctly. It's oh, going to yeah, be well, 95 okay. degrees. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> Still to come in this program, new video of earthquakes inside Mount St. Helens, what scientists hope to learn there. Plus, if you want to catch some salmon, a popular spot is now open. You're watching K2 News, the spirit of the Northwest. NASA's back on their game. We have so much technology now. I mean, they're in space, and we can just watch them whenever we want to. <laughs> Wilma Valderrama on an all-new Jimmy Kimmel Live. Good times, late night tonight, only on ABC. Hey, what's the hurry? Everyone's going to Binion's best sale of the year. Right now, at the Binion's half-off sale, you can save 50% off a complete pair of glasses. That's half off any pair in the store for a limited time only. Just in time for back to school. Binion's. Why pay more? Care service options. May I help you? I'm not sure what kind of senior care facility my dad needs. Can you help? I'm trying to find the right kind of senior services. Can, can you help me get started? What's the address of that place again? Hey, thanks, Care Service Options. I just found it on the Senior Care Guide. TheSeniorCareGuide.com, making it easy for you. If you need further assistance, call Care Service Options today, 503-663-6556. Well, I can't stop loving you. Americans have always loved their cars. But not many will tell you that they love their car insurance. Introducing Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. With features like accident forgiveness and deductible rewards. Can you love your car insurance as much as you love your car? Yes. That's Allstate, Stan. Only from your Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Hey, Mr. Opportunity again. If you're one of those people who likes to have choices, then you are going to love my next two words. Honda Clearance. Because it's your opportunity to pick the Accord, Civic, Odyssey, or any other Honda you want for a deal that's very nice. Come on, Honda Plus Clearance? Do I have to draw you a picture? You get it? <laughs> the 2005 Honda Clearance. Now you can lease a top-of-the-line Pilot EX for $2.69 a month for well-qualified customers. I'm Mr. Opportunity, I'm back, and I'm knocking. Welcome back. We're getting a great look at some of the latest pictures from the crater of Mount St. Helens. The latest earthquake this weekend shattered the new dome inside the mountain, a small rock fall. Then the entire side of the so-called whaleback collapses into a cloud of dust. Now, the rock falls have been triggered by magnitude 3 earthquakes beneath the still growing lava dome. When the cloudy weather clears, scientists hope to fly into the crater to get another look at how much of the dome has collapsed after this past weekend's quake. Very impressive. Well, anglers hit the water today looking for some salmon. Fall Chinook season officially opened at Buoy 10 near Astoria, but their catch may be less than in the past. The return of coho salmon is expected to be down about 10%. Now, during this season, you can catch two salmon a day, one 
can be a Chinook. And remember, your coho must have their adipose fin clipped. Buoy 10 stretches from the mouth of the Columbia River to the imaginary line from Rocky Point in Washington to Tongue Point in Oregon. Still ahead, he played on the Blazers' only championship team. Now Maurice Lucas is back with the Blazers. Ron explains all that next. Miss Nightline, miss this. And tonight on Nightline, despite the denial, steroid use catches up with one of the superstars of Major League Baseball. Hey, what's the hurry? Everyone's going to Binion's best sale of the year. Because right now at the Binion's half-off sale, you can save 50% off a complete pair of glasses. The Binion's half-off sale includes the very latest designer frames, titanium and rimless styles. It even includes bifocals, progressives, and prescription sunglasses. But the Binion's half-off sale is for a limited time only. Just in time for back to school. Binion's. Why pay more? Tired of snoring getting between you and your loved one? Breathe Right nasal strips can stop the snoring in six nights or less and get both of you back in the sack together. Get your free Breathe Right six-night sample pack at backinthesack.com. I mean, I don't mean to brag or anything. Oh, but here we go again. I feel stupendous. I feel great no matter where I am. I was happier than a June bug on a tomato plant. For 10 years now, cars have been telling you about... There's, there, you, there's that saying... Chevron with Tecron. Chevron with Tecron. Chevron with Tecron. And it turns out, they knew what they were talking about. Because when BMW, GM, Honda, and Toyota established a tough standard for gasoline called Top Tier, Chevron with Tecron was the first gasoline designated. In car talk, that's big stuff. Uh, I haven't thought it would be so much work! Watch out! I think there's a pitfall up ahead! Selling your home shouldn't be this hard. At Remax, you'll find an experienced agent to take on the job and make your life a whole lot simpler. Paper cut? Yeah. Let's stick with Remax. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. Ron Carlson here with us now. You gotta think this new addition to the Blazers brings a little bit of luck. Uh, let's hope so, yeah. because this guy was there when it really was happening. He's a right. tough guy. That, too, and he's a good player, mm -hmm. and he's going to be a great assistant coach. You know, we usually don't make a big deal out of it when the Blazers name assistant coaches, but if you're thinking the old days were good old days for the Blazers, then you'll like one of the assistants and who he will be. Two assistants stand today to the Blazers, 10-year NBA vet Monty Williams. The other, former Blazer Maurice Lucas, the man they used to call the enforcer. Lucas was the guy who laid down the law on the only Blazers championship team where his physical play earned him that nickname enforcer. Luke's been a Portland assistant before under Mike Schuler and Rick Adelman. Now his assignment for Nate McMillan, work with the team's big men. Luke is hoping to bring toughness and respect back to the team. I like to think so. Uh, and, you know, it, even with your own kids, you know, you can paint the picture, you can give them the directions, and they'll still use their own course. So uh, all we can do is paint the picture, give them the directions, uh, give them some history, give them some background, and it's up to the young man to accept that or not. Well, last month, Mariners fans were standing on their feet to applaud Rafael Palmero getting his 3,000th hit right here in Safeco Field. I wonder how many of them would be standing after today's news, though. Palmero has been suspended 10 games for testing positive for steroids. In March, Palmero emphatically told Congress he never used steroids. Today, in a statement, Palmero said he didn't knowingly take steroids. I am sure you will ask how I, test, how I tested positive for a banned substance. As I look back, I don't have the specific answer to give. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to explain to the arbitrator how the banned substance entered my body. Okay, after a busy weekend, the roster changes continue in Seattle. The latest to go, Paul's Bow Washington native Aaron Seeley. The M's released the starting pitcher today. As you can tell by the video, Seeley wasn't fooling anybody lately. He lost his last seven starts. Now, Jorge Campillo has been called up to take Seeley's place, and the M's probably aren't finished clearing house. A couple more pitchers are expected to be released or designated for assignment 
soon. And the news isn't any better for former Mariner Brett Boone tonight. Just three weeks after being traded to the Twins, he's also out of work. The Twins releasing him today. Boone, he struggled in Seattle this year and struggled even more in Minnesota. In his 14 games in a Twins uniform, he hit just 170. He says he's going to go home now, look himself in the mirror, and see if he really wants to continue with baseball. But uh, 36 years old might be kind of tough for him to get picked yeah. up by anybody right now. And I've never taken steroids either, Ron. I know it's hard to believe with my muscular well, yeah, structure. Yeah, the, way, the way you hit the golf right. ball. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> my sentiments exactly. Still ahead. <laughs> Moscow is the latest city to host what's becoming a national art festival. Comcast High Speed Internet. Faster than DSL, so music, photos, everything downloads in an instant. And we just keep getting faster. So you can do more online. It's one more reason more people across America choose Comcast. Call today for this great offer. Want to feel like a kid again? You will on your new Vespa. I'm Justin Fisher at Vespa Portland. Whether you're cruising out for coffee on one of these easy to ride beauties or carving up the highway on one of these handsome muscle machines, you will definitely make a statement on your Vespa. And are you tired of high pump prices? Park that gas guzzler, because you'll pay for your new Vespa with the money you save. Isn't it time you overindulged your inner child? Hop on and feel like a kid again. A relationship in trouble. You're distant and hard to reach. When you're battling depression, those closest to you may be hurt. I felt so down, I lost my connection with the people I loved most. Feelings of frustration. When you're battling depression, things you once loved, you no longer enjoy. Every little thing put me over the edge. I felt irritable all the time. A feeling of hopelessness. When you're battling depression, life feels like a constant struggle. I felt helpless. I just couldn't control my emotions. The symptoms of depression hurt everyone. If your world is an endless series of feelings of sadness, alienation, or hopelessness, these may be signs of depression. Today, people are participating in an investigational medication research study. You may be one of many who qualify to take part in this study. All research-related care and study-related medication are provided to you at no cost. Depression hurts everyone. Call Summit Research Network at 503-228-CARE. Finally tonight, Moscow has become the 25th city to host the Cow Parade. The parade is an international charitable arts festival where hundreds of life-sized fiberglass cows are placed on the streets. Some of the first cows appeared in a shopping center in Red Square, and over the next two weeks, they'll appear all over the city. Sponsors are invited to buy cows, which are then painted by celebrities, exhibited in public, and auctioned off for charity. Portland. You may remember, held a similar charity event three years ago, and someone stole one of the cows. You remember that? Yeah. And they had one at the airport, And with the too. front of the Hefeweizen oh, wow. cow, wasn't it the Hefeweizen cow? Uh, I think that, that was probably a different time in your life, Dad. But yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> it might be somewhere. I <laughs> bet it was. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in there. You betcha. Did not realize that was a worldwide event. <laughs> it's because of your muscles. we got three yeah, different, different conversations going on at once. <laughs> hey, tomorrow's a nice, comfy day. Then the heat comes back on Wednesday. So enjoy tomorrow's 83s, and we'll be hot for three days in a row. We apologize for this newscast, and we hope you watch us again tomorrow. Are you trying to keep us in line? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> somebody somebody has to tonight. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching the Northwest News Leader. For news online, go to KTU.com. Do you talk about TV?